And we are live. We are live, everyone. Welcome and good evening. Welcome Hello. to the Yard Sale Artist Studios. I'm here with my co-host, as usual, Mr. Mark Hatherley. How you doing, Mark? I'm okay, Jared. How you doing this lovely evening? I'm doing good, man. I am doing good. Good um, stuff. I just realized that I'm going to want to show people the comparison piece that I just finished, which is not in this room. So I'm going to go grab it. And well, um, that's, uh -oh. that's all right. We don't have any viewers yet anyway. They're just, <laughs> they'll, they'll come in and as time goes on. So you just hang loose. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. All right, I'm back. What I miss? <laughs> Not much. I'm just sitting here waiting patiently. I so see we've got a few viewers in the in the chat now, or yeah. at least we have a few viewers. I want to say hi and welcome everybody. Yes, hello. All. We're going to be working on some stuff tonight. I know I'm going to be working on a Doc Brown from Back to the Future. I'm going to go full screen for just a second. Yeah, yeah, it looks good so far. Because I want to show you, I finished Marty McFly. Okay, so this is my favorite thing about this is, is a two-piece commission from a, from a client. My favorite thing that I'm doing with this is, is they will go like this. I don't know if you can quite see, but see this big clock in the middle will we'll continue yeah, that through all awesome. pieces. <laughs> that is cool. Connect them. And the Maybe time's going to be 10.04, which is the time the lightning struck the, the tower in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This, Hello, Jeff and Rick. Oh, hey, Jeff. And then this clock, you can't really see the time on it, but hopefully when it moves over here, um, it's going to be 124, but you can't see the hands for 124 on it because that's what time he um, he left Pine Valley to go on his adventure and the time right. he kind of came back. And then this one is just a special time to the client. Uh, 3 p.m. is a special time for the client. So that's yeah. just for the client. But you got your two references there, and it's going to carry over into this piece. I'm very happy with how Marty turned out. I exactly. said Marty looks pretty smooth, I must say. Thank you, sir. I had scanned him in today because I decided I liked it so much. I'm going to send it to my girl Mohan in India and yeah, have yeah. her professionally color it. And that one came up nice good. Yeah, that's anyway. a pretty awesome detail, too, the, with the time in the back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to well, be doing that this, this side with Doc Brown. Lovely. I'm going to select something from the good old hat. Uh oh, he's going to the hat, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we have this evening. Green Lantern, oh, cool. Green Lantern from good old yeah, Bill HD. HD. Yeah. Who else would it be from? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Green Lantern, okay. I'm starting to think the Duchess didn't put my naked storm into the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, is that, a, is that a request? <laughs> <laughs> this is a concert request. <laughs> I, I know nothing about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to find the right pins to get started. I've decided that on these pieces, I do do a lot with the brush and the ink, but I like to do all my basic line work with the pigmas first. I've tried it a couple different ways, and that's just the way I like best. So I'm going to get busy on this line work. Yep, I'm going to get busy as well. We had some technical switcheroos up for the people in the listening audience. So, like Rick, um, and of course, Duchess, um, I see you in the chat right now. Let us know how we're doing on the volume of the music. Yeah, because it's hard. Oh, yeah, it's got messed up, and we're just kind of oh. trying to find the right balance again. And I believe the post office has now opened, so I should be able to send this stuff off soon. Oh, sweet. Just got to get some proper packaging so that it doesn't get damaged. It's so nerve-wracking 
once you let it go. You know what I mean? I know. I know. You get the hands, I'm like, I am, the person is nerve wracking. I'm always on the hunt for like <laughs> packaging, like really good packaging stuff. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing to find is those boxes that printer paper comes in. Printer oh, paper yeah. comes in a in a pretty standard box. Right there, Both right. the lid and the bottom of the box are almost exactly 11 by 17, which is, oh. you know, this size, the standard page size. That's right. And so I'm always cutting off cutting off the tops and the bottoms of those boxes and using those to sandwich the art between. <laughs> That's a good idea. I could, I could get some of those boxes from my job. Yeah. yeah every, everybody's always throwing them out or, or yeah. putting them in the recycle bin. So, like they say, cut out the tops and the bottoms. Right. That's a good idea, Jerry. Yes, sir. Those are the only like kind they, I have. Like they say, what? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like they say, good thing I thought of it, huh? There you go. <laughs> I even. So, one, I, man's, one man's trash is another man's treasure, huh? You know it. I go to uh, my print shop. They always have a ton of them where I have my prints made. Yes. And I'll get that. like 40 or 50 of them. I'm actually I'll bring them home and I'll pay my son like a quarter of a box to cut them out. Yeah, yeah. I got to cut them out. Thank you. I am. Um, I'm kind of upset the mother boxes I let go in the trash. <laughs> Those are my favorites. And then, of course, once you've got them on 11 by 17s, when you sell an 11 by 14 or a 9 by 12, you can always cut them down from there if you need to. Exactly. Well, the, the sound um, sounds good. I just plugged in my earphones and okay. um, uh, Rick agrees with me. Okay. Now, hey, Courtney in the chat. What up, Courtney? Yay, yay. We have a use. pop quiz question from Rick. Uh -oh. How much power does the DeLorean time machine need? DeLorean? Somewhere DeLorean. between 1.20 and 1.22 gigawatts. Somewhere between that those two numbers. 1.21 gigawatts. They don't have nuclear reactors, so the only thing they'd have for that would be like a bolt of lightning. Yep. I've seen the movie a few times. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Courtney says 2024. Oh, cool. <laughs> Got me. Uh, we have a hello from Smart Ray from Facebook. What up, Smart Ray from Facebook? So you can see the Facebook chats, huh? Uh-huh. Cool. Okay, I didn't know you could see those. All right, let me get started. I'm sitting here. Smart Ray is asking, who's that person you're drawing? I'll never tell Smart Ray. <laughs> I'll never tell, but I'll give you a, a hint. Here's my model picture that I have off to the side. See, I've darkened in some of the key features that I need to key in on when I do it. And it's a companion piece. Where's the one I just showed? I lost it already. I didn't even get out of the chair. How did I lose it? Here it is. <laughs> it's I finished, amazing. Dude. I finished Marty McFly. And so Doc Brown is going to continue the big clock that you see into his piece. So they'll actually connect when you hang them on the wall. That's what I'm working on. Uh -oh. I'm about to start a Green Lantern. Oh point. yeah, Green Lantern's going down. So cool. what was the theme of the dance that George Lorraine and Marty all attended? Enchantment under the sea. Man. <laughs> how, how do you know all this stuff? I've seen this movie so many times. Yeah, but I, I see them. <laughs> So many times. I know what I'm watching tonight. Can't go wrong. <laughs> uh, the last con I did, which was way back in like November, um, Courtney Gaines was there. Courtney Gaines had a small part in the first Back to the Future movie. Um, in fact, at the Enchantment on the Sea Dance, he's the last guy that gives. Um, George McFly, some crap. George is already taking out Biff, and he goes to the dance, and this other dude tries to take Lorraine from him at the dance, and and George handles his business, and that that actor was Courtney Gaines, who was at my last convention appearance, and a super nice guy. I knew him more from the movie um, Memphis Bell, which is one of my favorites. Uh, horror fans know him from Children of the Corn. I mean, we got dad rap going early. I love it. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Green Lantern, let's see. Okay. Just remind me, when we do our three-minute sketch break tonight, Nice. Um, Joe made a new beat 
this week, and I want to feature it since we don't talk much during our three minutes. <laughs> it's just, oh, we're that's pretty cool. much working away. Yeah, Joe made a new beat that's really cool. I want to feature it during our three minutes tonight. Now I'm in college, Auburn University. My roommate has a PS1. So I was talking on a uh, pop-up show that I did last this last week. Speaking of the three-minute sketches, I'm thinking about doing kind of a fundraiser episode, maybe, where um, I discovered if you have four by six cards, mine are a little too big, five by seven. But if you have four by six, it qualifies as a postcard. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I thought um, we may do a fundraiser episode just to raise money to pay for StreamYard and all the stuff that goes along with making the show. Um, to where we'll do three minute sketches, we'll take uh, we'll take requests and we'll do them for like five bucks. You drop five bucks in the PayPal, yeah, three, three minute sketch, and then we just stick a postcard stamp uh, stamp on it and we mail it to you like a postcard. Works for me. Or whoever you want it sent to, if you want to get one for somebody else, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, I've got the four by six cards, but I want to get them with my information on the bottom. Um, and if this is something, I don't know how much, if, if it's relatively cheap to send postcards to the U S from Bermuda, probably worth finding out if it's, yeah, if it's monetarily feasible, I will, I will send you the cards. I'll have your cards made right, and sent to oh, that's you cool. and then we can both kind of be in on it. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, then, man. Anyway, just an idea to kick around. It's a great idea. It's all about expansion, you know? Yeah. I thought I'd make it fun, yeah, make exactly. a little money for us to cover our expenses. Yep. I'm down for that, Jerry. Okay, another question. Here we go. This one is multiple choice. What is the new, the one technology introduced in Back to the Future Part 2? That consumes that consumers can now get a hold of uh, a a self tying shoe b hello duck self tying shoe a food replicator. <laughs> I don't know if that's right or not. Courtney said b a a, a hello duck. Yes, uh, but you get a self tying shoe. Well, mm -hmm. they do have. Um, they do have um, hoverboards now, but they're not exactly right. the way they were in the movie. Right. I exactly. would say probably the self-tying shoe. Is that a thing what? now? Because I mean the what's it called the the DAC, like you said, exactly. The DAC is, I guess, is available, but it does. It might look like it, but it doesn't work like it. <laughs> exactly. And the you know correct I mean? answer is self-tying shoe. Hey, I got one right, Jerry. Hey, look at you. <laughs> It was got one, one out of on fire. Let's get started. I like uh, I like the fun quiz quiz show tonight. Yeah, keep it going. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a quiz to Rick and, and it's not really fair because I don't remember the answer. Right. So I'm really kind of just asking the question. Um what Jaws number were they on? When you got to the future, there was like a holographic shark that came out of the movie theater <laughs> and tried Ooh, to find right. I can't remember what Jaws number it was. It was like out oh, twelve or something. I don't remember. Yeah, you're right in it. And he goes, Shark still looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing they never put. I think that's what Jaws came to be named for. Wow. <laughs> they make like a shark. What musician made a cameo as Marty's future boss in Back to the Future 2? Oh, it was a very small part, like a, like a very small, like a flea sized part, if you will, because it was flea. From Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, nice! Another one I couldn't remember. He played, uh, I think, Needles was his name. Oh my goodness! Became Not his anymore. boss in the future. <laughs> yeah, he came on the screen and then he fired him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as soon as his, uh, as soon as they finished their dirty deals, 
his boss's boss showed up with the you're fired. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We the got, facts. Uh, you're right. You got that right. In the house. Hello, Who's in the house? Oh yeah. He says he thinks it was Jaws 19. That sounds right to me. Yeah. Now everybody's wondering. Rick's thinking it was 11. Right I'm now, 19 to... sounds right. About to Google it. It was 19. It was. Oh, Rick, what? Rick checked in with it. He said it was 19. What? Good job, Norman. But it's amazing how the time has actually come, huh? The back yeah. in the future time. It's actually. <laughs> you know, I was. Uh, Recently, we covered on our podcast, Action Film Face-Off, we did uh, The Demolition Man. Right. And there's some sites you can go to that are pretty funny because there's a lot of things in Demolition Man that actually came true as far yeah. as like his like technology and stuff. Yeah. It's like one of the best movies for guests of the future that they've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny to read all the stuff in there. It is. It is funny. Like they predicted pretty well. Oh, I also got some more Demolition Man trivia for you. So I know you guys don't have, we talked about this on a previous episode. I know you guys in Bermuda don't have as much like fast food stuff like we have here in the States. Yeah. But uh, our Taco Bells, which were prominently featured in the Demolition Man, our Taco Bells um, originally were like an orange and yellow logo. And then they switched it to like the purple and turquoise, which is what they are still to this day. Right. Um, and the whole reason they switched them was for Demolition Man. Because in the movie, it was the future, and they were like a purple and turquoise logo. <laughs> and the people at Taco Bell were like, we kind of like that. <laughs> and yeah. so they actually changed the whole That's insane. The whole marketing scheme for all Taco Bell because of that movie. That's free advertisement. There you go. Rick says, um, thank you for the awesome art that you make. His uh, home office looks great. Nice. He's been a big supporter, and I would thank you very much, Rick. Rick did something really cool. He took one of my book page sketches um, of Cyclops, and he got an issue of X Factor that's kind of got a famous Cyclops headshot on it. Nice. And he, he exacto blade cut it out the headshot of Cyclops and then put my drawing in underneath it so it closes and my drawing is in the silhouette of the head with the original cover. Oh man, it's dope. You did a great job. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. That is awesome. Took you to the next level. It's all we gotta start marketing that man. You gotta start selling those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got a lot of good feedback on Twitter. That's what it's all about, huh? <laughs> Good job. The Empire says that is cool, a perfect fit. It was a perfect fit. He did a great job. I'm telling you. No, Courtney. Uh, he is actually drawing Green Lantern. It was picked up from the hat. Um, and GLHD is the one that picked Green Lantern. Oh, Doc Brown has a lot of my favorite lines from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching you. My, uh, I'm actually excited that you're drawing um, the way you're drawing it, where it's like two, what, in one sort of situation. Yeah. Because yeah. growing up, Back to the Future was one of my favorite movies. It was so fun to watch. It still is. Stands yeah. the test of time. It does, yeah. This this. The key to all great, great movies like that is good, a good story, b great characters, and and c just a um, 
what do I think? What's the word I want to look for here? Just a Good timeless, time, re, just memorable lines. Yeah. Memorable lines help a lot. Like my favorite things that like <laughs> Doc has this ongoing bit. Like you don't even notice it the first time you watch the movies, but you start picking up on multiple viewings. Doc has this thing where he's always making the like he made a model of small of uh, Hill Valley. Remember he made the model and he, yeah. mm -hmm. he says, I apologize for the crudity of this model. It's not to scale. And you look at it, it's like the most elaborate model you've ever yeah, seen. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then he does it again in uh in a part I know he doesn't get it in part three when he's when they're in the old west and they're playing in the thing with the train. He's like, I apologize for the crudity of this model, it's not to scale. Yeah, and then and it's once like, again, yeah, it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Exactly. I just love those little ongoing bits that that kind of take repeat viewing for you to catch on to. Yep, that's when Tom and Kerr ran into the movie song. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I remember that part two and three came out like in the same year. They came out just a couple months yep. apart. And it was a while since they came since they came out, wasn't it? Like since the first one. Let's see, the first one was eighty five. Yeah, and the sequels came out in like ninety. Yeah, it's like okay. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. Because I was waiting for that. Because how the first one ended, it's like okay. And then you're waiting and waiting and waiting. I know a couple other fun things about the Back to the Future franchise. Number one, they originally got um, Eric Stoltz played Marty McFly. You can go online now. It's much more available than it used to be. I see you're erasing everything. What are you starting over? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of put. I want to put. I see now. Uh, I should put like a twist. So more, <laughs> more, more that's facing forward. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Eric Stoltz played Marty McFly. And you can. Get, there's a lot of footage of him doing the scenes because he got. They got decently far into the movie with Eric when they were just like, "No slide on you, Eric," but it, this it's just not working. Um. And they got, uh, of course, Michael J. Fox came in, filmed it in, all in the evenings after he'd finished filming Family Ties. He'd come in, oh, spend his evenings filming Back to the Future. That's something I didn't know. Mm. Yep. It's all almost all filmed at night because he had to film uh, Family Ties during the day. But yeah, the Eric Stoltz footage is interesting. You should, you should go watch it and just be like, wow, I like. They were totally making this movie with another guy and then switched it midstream. Yeah, I didn't. I never knew that. And Michael J. Fox, that's where I really got to like him from the movie. Yeah, he's really good in it. Rick says that he had to do a small cheat on your drawing. The page was a little narrow. Um, then uh, the cut of the silhouette. Okay. He says he cut the small silver out of the top of the page and taped it against the edge. Oh. You can't even tell that it's there. That's funny you should say that because I like looked really closely at it. Like <laughs> I can't believe that actually fit. And I was like, it must have just fit. So he totally fooled me because I, I looked hard at it. <laughs> <laughs> totally fooled me, buddy. And I really looked. Courtney says that Family Ties was awesome. It was. It was a good show. Great show. I guess I must have been too young. You remember? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like it better the other day. He's erasing everything again, people. <laughs> I was just saying you erasing it again. Well, you, you can't really see his hand where the ring's gonna be. So I see. Well, I must put it back. Where's GL? He's not even in the chat. Team. I know, right? Like it's his big day. Like he needs to see this. Mark's <laughs> like, like twice. The the heartbreak and consternation that went into making his piece. <laughs> mm -mm.
<laughs> Rick says he's glad he could fool you. He did. Kudos to Rick. I think one of my favorite scenes with um, Back to the Future was when they had the Western and they had like the train. Mm -hmm. I think that was cool. What do you mean? That was the third one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a very tense scene. Keeps you on the edge of your seat, which is good. Yeah. Uh, one of the um writers of that movie uh hall i think is his name he's actually written some comic books and stuff too he um i believe he had it written into his contract when he wrote the film that they could never remake it oh nice which is why you get all these remakes today but nobody's talking about a back of the future remake yeah. I'm actually kind of glad, you know. He was like, nope. Yeah, you got sort of sick of seeing reboots off the wall, don't you? And I'm glad he did that, because I think it's a perfect movie. Yeah, exactly. Perfect trilogy. It's like it's just making people lazy, like, just, just, keep, rebooting, <laughs> just keep rebooting, you know? That's right. Not from the original. When I think about original properties that have sprung up over just, you know, the last couple of years that have got some real legs to them. Yeah. Uh, John Wick is the first one that comes to mind. You know, I haven't really watched any of these. You know. I like John Wick. I heard they got a lot of shooting in them. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good, good. Yeah, I like um, the actor. Pretty, mm -hmm. I think everybody likes him. Dude. He's a pretty popular guy. He's a nice person. Good yeah, dude. Very. He likes fast bikes. Yeah. Them. I was just blown away by you see all these amazing things that John Wick does and you realize that um, Keanu is like doing all his own stunts. He's yeah, doing his own thing. driving, he's doing his own fighting, his own shooting. Yeah, he likes all that too. That dedication is impressive. Yeah. He um when he does movies, they actually put in his contract that he's not allowed to ride bikes because they're afraid that he's gonna have an accident and hurt himself. Because his the bikes that he has, they're all like Stupid, crazy fat. <laughs> well, he got a bike scene in John Wick 3, but I think it was all shot. Um, actually, sitting still, you know, CGI the motion and I think. But he definitely rode a bike in part three. <laughs> mm -hmm. He probably said, look, it's either this or I don't do it. I have a pop quiz question for you. Go ahead. What was Dr. Brown's dog's name? Einstein. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> and then back in the 50s, he had a dog that looked a lot like Einstein. I think his name was Copernicus. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I forgot he had a dog in the movie. Mm-hmm. We got Mike Elmore in the house. Hello. Hello, Mike. sir. <laughs> Mike Elmore, you are correct, sir. This is Doc Brown. I got to show off once again. It is a companion piece to the I've already finished Marty. And then they will connect via the big clock into one piece. All right, you know it's serious. I'm getting the brush out. Are you good? Mm -hmm. We're getting serious, people. And I'm using a new brand of ink, so this is going to be exciting for all of us. Oh, a new brand. Nice. Yeah, I ran out when, when I did Marty with the other one. So I just hope this uh, ink... Oh, yeah, it's it's fine. 
You're living over the edge tonight. I'm living on the raggedy edge, my friend. <laughs> Mike says that the the dog was the same. They just changed his name. Oh, I, I'm sure they used the same dog actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they were basically implying, you know, that he had had this dog. And, of course, dogs don't live that long. So, uh, that he had this, you know, similar looking dog. And I think his name was Copernicus in the 50s. Mm. And Einstein in the 80s. I can't remember if he ended up with a dog in the 1800s or not. I'm showing my weakness in that part three is the one I've seen the fewest amount of times. Yeah. One, I've probably seen no joke. If I had to really try to put an honest to gosh number on it, it's probably around 30. And then two about the same because I really liked two when it came out, you know, on VHS. Right. Oh my gosh, that was my go-to Back to the Future film. I liked it better than the first one. I still kind of do to this day just because it takes the first one and just plays with what it already made right. so well. Again, just a little dedication to those things that don't seem to make a difference. Like, I love Principal Strickland. Slackers! He calls everybody slackers. Oh my <laughs> goodness, that thing. was hilarious. That guy cracks me up. And he's just like, the same. he looks exactly the same in 1955 as he does in 1985. Like, he <laughs> changed a bit. That's hilarious. Like, he doesn't look at all different. Just like Doc Brown, when he... Whether yeah. when he goes to the future, he's like, I had some, some work done. So I look younger and he takes off the little mask that he's wearing in the future and he looks exactly yeah, the same. Exactly the same. <laughs> Doc was funny, dude. I like that. It's a pretty funny bit. Yeah, Doc was something else. Okay, pop question from Vianne Peeler. Who did Doc Brown suggest might be Secretary of Trust in 1985? Oh, because he says Ronald Reagan's president. The actor? Who's secretary? Jerry Lewis? Is that right? Hmm. That's a good question. I know it. I know it's a, an actor famous in the fifties. I want to say he recommended Jerry Lewis. But that's a very good question. I'm. I'm that might have been who he went to for vice president. I think it was. I think he said vice president's Jerry Lewis. This is Secretary of Treasury, and it was another famous 50s actor, and I am not going to think of it. Hmm. Welcome, Shannon Mashburn. Hello, Shannon. What up, Monster Mash? That's my new nickname for Shannon Mashburn. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know he'd have a nickname when he came in tonight. Um... I like his comment. Great Scott, that's Great heavy. Scott. <laughs> you got there, right? You keep saying that. Is there some sort of gravitational problem in the future? <laughs> Mike says, "Who originally played the role of Marty?" I was talking about that earlier. That was um, mm -hmm. Eric Stoltz. Bonus question: What did Christopher Lloyd think of the actor's name? The the actor name was. Well, oh, yeah, what did he think the actor's name was? Yeah, what did he think the actor's name was? I, I, I don't know. That's a, I, did he think his name was Alex Keaton? Because <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Alex Keaton just for humor value. I love Doc Brown so much. In some ways, the Back to the Future story reminds me a lot of my high school experience. Not that I did any time travel or anything like that. Yeah, that would be cool. But I worked at a museum. And so, like, I was 16, 17 years old working at the museum. And all the other employees were, like, these curators in their 50s and 60s. <laughs> And so, like, all my friends were in there. Like, the uh, next youngest person who worked there was, like, 45. So <laughs> nice. So, like, I kind of felt like Marty McFly because he was friends with Doc, who was, like, you know, much older than he was. Yeah. And in that regard, I, I was like, this is a similar 
experience. Just have this. I have a weird set of friends for someone my age. <laughs> but they were great people. And I loved them all. Yep. They filmed almost half the movie with Eric Schultz. Eric Schultz, yep. Yeah. But he was a method actor. Mm -hmm. So he had everyone call him Marty on set. Oh, I see. I get it. Okay. And then Mike says that um, Christopher Lloyd didn't know his real name it was Eric. And when <laughs> he said they replaced Eric, he asked, who the hell is Eric? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's real interesting to watch the scenes because, I mean, they're almost shot for shot, word for word. It's just, you'll see how, I mean, Eric's a great actor, but you'll see how Keaton just, I called him Keaton, that's funny, how Michael <laughs> J. Fox just um, has just that little dash of just the way he his eyes move is funny, you know? Yeah. There's a little comedy and it's just his regular movement, if yeah. that makes any sense. He does a lot of what they what they call that, I mean, just sort of, ad, not ad lib, I mean, you, when they add in the earn things in the movie, yeah, like ad lib, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he does a just lot a of little, that. just that little way he'll move his eyebrow or whatever. Yeah. It's just he's just got certain something that makes him very funny. And Eric played it a little more straight, yeah. With part one and part two, didn't they change the actress that played his girlfriend? Yeah, the they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to say it was someone pretty famous in the first one, like Elizabeth Shue. And then she got, and they replaced a couple of people, um, like the actor who played his dad, uh, Crispin Glover. He got replaced as a part two because he, he get a load of this. He uh, he demanded to the studio that he get paid as much as Michael J. Fox. Very nice. Oh wow. And, lost and they were like, um, no. Michael J. Fox was pretty much in the entire movie. Yeah, yeah and he was, it's and his he was, movie. Yeah, and he was big. Michael J. Fox was big in that time. Mm-hmm. You remember Team Wolf and all those movies he made? Oh, yeah, I got to go yeah. back and watch. I haven't seen Team Wolf in years. Yeah, he back. was really popular then. Watch that one. I liked Team Wolf. He need a rewatch on Team Wolf. Yeah. So check the, check out this artist shortcut I got going on. So when I did Marty, I had my ink wash, my darker color, because I, I did two level show don't tell. I did two levels <laughs> you'll see in the in his shadowing. The one that you see most prominently is the dark, and then there's a light layer that's harder to see. Um, it's like a faded it, layer. Or, yeah, like a fade to it. And so once I got the dark wash exactly where I wanted it, I just put a lid on it. It <laughs> saved it this jar. Nice. So now I have the exact dark wash I used on that. And uh, I have a new jar that's just water that I will use to make my light wash for tonight. And the first thing I'm going to do is rinse my brush that I've been using. And it's already going to start making see the water's already getting dark. And then I got a strip here that I used to test. That's where I finally, you can see the darkest one is where I finally got it to where I wanted it. And there's a light one that's real hard to see up here. So I'm trying to match the light one now. This is for all you people uh, who just love these kind of art tips. <laughs> it shows. Yeah. And love painting. It's not bad. That's not bad. I'm going to let that dry and see what I think. This might be just about right. I might not have to add much black to this wash. And I'll have, and I'll bottle this up and then I'll, have two good light and dark washes on hand for the next several paintings I do. This has been Art Tips with Jared. <laughs> I like it. But I also need to let uh, Doc Brown dry a little bit too, because you get going too fast, and next thing you know, you drag your hand through a yep. A wet black spot, and, and you got black ink. You don't even know where it came from. Smeared everywhere. Nobody likes it. Hold up some lines while it's drying. <laughs> I 
I was actually kind of hoping that they was going to do a part four. You know, being they had the train, I thought that was a cool element. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they flirted with it. There's comics you can get that continue the story, and there's video games. But I know what you're saying. Not the same. <laughs> well, not quite. Yup. Not quite the same. Yeah, like the storyline from the Ghostbusters video game is probably going to be your truest Ghostbusters 3 with the original cast. Right. Because they all did their own voice acting in that game. So that's truly the last time they were all together. Whoops, I see a spot I forgot to do. You know what? I don't want to mess with that wash because it's right about where I want it. Well, I'll play with a little bit of fire here. Why not? No risk, no reward. Exactly. You know, you're living on the edge tonight. <laughs> Might as well go for it. I am. BN Peeler says that there was a cartoon series. That sounds familiar. What, Ghost Bosses? Uh, Back to the Future, I think. Well, there definitely was a Ghostbusters cartoon. Series. Yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, I remember that. I, was there a Back to the Future cartoon? Because it, it feels I, like I, there was, but I, I don't can't, remember that. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember if it was. You don't want to add any more. So this is going to be my light wash. Dark wash. I should probably label it. Be a marker here. Apparently there was a Back to the Future cartoon. I feel but like there was, but I don't know that I ever 1991. Where was I when this came on? Let's see. I was just getting back from Germany. Nice. <laughs> We came back to Germany in 90. So we didn't know a lot about, well, there's a lot of things we didn't know about, you know, in the States. So we did not know about a Back to the Future cartoon. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let Doc keep dry here for a little bit, which is good because we're about the 45 minute mark. You know what that means? Already? <laughs> I know. So what we draw for the three minute. Oh, goodness. Yeah. All right. So, folks in the chat, there's not a lot of you. Uh, we got Norman and, of course, Duchess and Courtney. Uh, Rick was here. I don't know if he's still here or not. Uh, Mike. Uh, anybody out there who's watching and wants to get in the chat with a suggestion for the three-minute sketch? We're about to get, get to that soon. Uh, last week, there's a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and there's the Black Widow from the week before that. And there's... Uh, Hawk from Buck Rogers was the first one. So those are the, the three minute sketches from the last few episodes. If you've got a suggestion for something you'd like to see done in a three minute sketch, don't be shy. Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, maybe. Sherlock, we'll Sherlock Holmes. Holmes. Space, Space Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> Space Ghost. Jinx. <laughs> Shannon, I gotta ask, have I ever done a Space Ghost commission for you? Because I know I've done one, but I can't remember who it was for. I wonder if it was for Shannon. Rick right, says it's your Space Ghost Sherlock. Uh Carmen San Diego. San Diego. Shannon says not me. Yeah, huh, okay. Must have been somebody else. That was a fun piece. Uh, Space Ghost is one I had. Oh, Space Ghost, Sherlock, Carmen San Diego, Eeyore, Scooby Doo. I never saw Scooby Doo. Are you making that up? Okay, I'll 
I'll set Doc Brown aside here. Oh, no, now I see Scooby. <laughs> just showed up. Out of nowhere. Quote, unquote. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, I got to find my timer. Where, oh, here's my little leg timer, my little three-minute sand timer. You playing tonight, Mark? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a get in for the fun of it. Who we doing? Um, a good no, question. Yeah. Uh, anybody else got any more last call on suggestions? I'll wait another thirty seconds or so in case you got a delay. And then I'll have uh, I'll have Courtney. Courtney, you can go ahead and pick your random number because I'm just going to set my pencil down and and then move it that many spaces until it lands on whoever's going to win. Then, like I was saying on future episodes, we'll do these on slightly smaller cards. And uh, we do, we'll do. we have like a fundraiser episode where people can come in and request their character, get a three-minute sketch. And we'll only charge for like five bucks. And we'll put a postcard stamp on it. And we'll put your address on it. It'll come to you like a postcard or whoever you want it to go to. And, you know, we get enough of a handful of those $5 cards. And that'll really help us offset the cost of our hosting services and stuff like that. So that's something we'll do in the future. But tonight's is a fun, just a fun one. Mm -hmm. Courtney says her number is number three. Number three, and I don't see any new uh, any numbers in the chat, so let me just go one, two, three. I think Courtney's cheating somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was Mickey Mouse was her call last week. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this week I landed on Sherlock Holmes, which I believe nice. was hers again. <laughs> And I'm going to do something a little different tonight. I'm not going to pull up any reference. I'm just going to do a Holmes in sort of my own little cartoony style. Oh, boy, I need a reference. I can't even remember what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Holmes, you got a lot of room to play. And that's why I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to kind of do him in a cartoonish look. Uh, so, you know, this could come out good. It could come out terrible, but it's going to be yep. fun either way. I'll wait till uh, Mark looks like he's good and ready, and I'll flip the timer and we'll. Yeah, I just dip my pencil in some black ink. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> you know right. what's going to happen is like the three minute sketches is going to be the only like the most popular thing of what we do, and this show is just going to become us doing three minute three sketches yeah, every exactly. episode all the time. Sherlock Holmes. Let's see. Yeah, Mark seems to always keep knocking his ink out. Oh boy, <laughs> I, I even forgot I had ink up because I'll do something earlier. Yeah, I was using uh, um, this India ink by Pro Art. I found this on sale at my local. Yeah, the um, India ink is pretty good. I think that's what uh, I have. Where do I shop? What's it called? It's uh, not Hobby Lobby. We have a Hobby Lobby. And I snagged that out of the sales section. And then I got a big set, like ridiculously good deal on a big set of the Bombays. Like all kinds of different colors. Right. All kinds of different colors of Bombays. It was like a like a thirty color pack, and I got it for like thirty dollars. It's a good nice. deal, and it had a black in it, so that's what I've been using on Doc Brown. And I honestly, I, I kind of can't tell the difference, but I think I like the consistency of the Bombay a little better. So that might become my brand. Yeah. Okay, and, I'm ready when you are. All right, he's ready. Sherlock so let's like Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to do a cartoony style, and we'll start in three, two. One and off we go. I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat, but I can reach it by hand so it counts. <laughs> Anything you can reach by hand is okay. That's the rule. There you go. <laughs> So 
So what did you guys do for Mother's Day? Oh, man, I forgot about it. That's right. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Oh, we... It's Mother's Day is an odd duck around here mm. because um, my wife's mother lives in the same town. Oh, uh, right. So she kind of spends a lot of time with her mother. Um, although we did make sure we had some stuff for Mama here. We got her a couple gifts. And we, I went out and got her favorite breakfast, which is McDonald's hotcakes. Nice. <laughs> nice. And... Uh, but she like like she had dinner over with her mother. Okay. So I kind of got off the hook for that. <laughs> and, uh, so you uh, guys had like a boys' day out, sort of. Yeah, sort of. Cats away, mice will play. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of feel bad for. Her. It feels like her Mother's Day kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, you know? Oh, uh, right. It we happens. try to make it special. Yeah, exactly. Most times we appreciate the small things in life. Indeed. Oh, man, we're down to about our last uh, 10 seconds, I'd say. Oh, just a couple grains of sand left. Five, four. Oh, wow, she's doing three. it again. <laughs> Yeah, we're about out of time. So I didn't get nearly as far on this uh, home as I would like. That's cool. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. So. All right. So it's hard mm -hmm. to see. <laughs> but I did a little thing. My favorite thing is I hold up the magnifying glass. So the one eye is bigger than the other. <laughs> <It's being magnified. laughs> nice. And oh, I like yours. It's very cool. Good yeah, job. Thanks. Thank you, sir. I feel compelled now to, to um, cheat. and <laughs> <laughs> I do this for like like kids and stuff all the time. They're like, Even though the time's on, I'm like, let me firm up some of these lines so you get a halfway decent drawing. Yep. I want Rick that. says, Mark wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until you get on the show yourself. I, I, can see, I can see where this three minute sketch is going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> In due time, Jared. <laughs> it's gonna be like, oh, like, bro. <laughs> That's all people's gonna want to see. Yep, I told you. <laughs> Just you watch. All right, back to Green Lantern. <laughs> he says, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, I, I best pencil now. I gotta use a different one. I cleaned it. I know, but the ink is inside the little tube, and then it comes out. So it's like you're inking with a pencil. Uh, All right, Sue. So. And not that I'm a big, uh, like, last word guy, but no, it's not right. All right, well, add Sherlock in with the rest. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other beautiful three minutes. Oh, I, I drew this today. I forgot to show you this. I did a uh, goose. Oh, that is cool. From uh, Galaxy Rangers, one of my favorite cartoons. I did a goose shot for a client today. That's just laying over here to my right that I'd show you. Yeah, I actually that. saw that already. I was wondering, I couldn't figure out who it was because I'm, I'm not familiar. Yeah, Galaxy Rangers is it's got it's like there's very few of us that know about it. It's one of the greatest sci-fi cartoons they ever made. It's just I don't know why um it never really grabbed the public consciousness. Right. It's funny though, some things just don't catch on. I know it's bizarre. Yeah, strange, you know. We got Lloyd 
in Lloyd? the house. Hello, Lloyd. Del Regard in the house. Hello, Lloyd. Oh, you know what? I forgot to feature the music. Let's. I'm gonna feature it now. Joe's newest track, ladies and gentlemen. Joe made a track this week called Tron Solo. It's on his SoundCloud. I'll try to be quiet for a while. We'll enjoy it. Go for it, sir. Turn it up a little bit. Rook says, Hen Flynn, question mark. I don't know what that's in regard to. He's lost me. Yeah, got me. What was the name of the character you drew from Ga Galaxy Ranger? Was his name Han Flynn? Uh, I know him as Goose from Galaxy Rangers. Um, if he's known by another name of Han Flynn, I'm prepared to believe that. Hmm? Tron I, Blue, Han Flynn. Oh, uh, okay. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> he's combining Tron characters and Star Wars characters. <laughs> He's, he's writing jokes for himself over there, <laughs> which I applaud. I do it myself all the time. I don't judge anybody for it. I, I write jokes for myself often. So I'm putting down my first layer. And as we've talked about a million times on the show, you always start with your light layer. Light first, then dark. Pay attention, folks. <laughs> There's a quiz later. Yeah, exactly. I actually tried that this week with my journaling. And let me see. It came out pretty cool. Excellent. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> All right. So what I do is when I look at my reference picture right there, I look for like areas that are very starkly white like this area of his face is white so i know i'm going to basically color every area of his face with the light wash except where it's white i'm going to leave that as you guessed it ladies and gentlemen white hmm. the eraser piece got stuck in my ink wash and i don't like it there we go Up through the follow this mark. Yep, I'm talking to myself while I do it. Go for it. I think all artists do that. Talking myself through this here piece. Great <laughs> Scott. <laughs> And Lloyd says, is that Pennywise, Jared? LOL. Guess not, <laughs> Dr. Brown. Gotcha. <laughs> nope, it's totally Pennywise. Got it. It was right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Track. I'll turn it down a little bit. There we 
are. I gotta be real careful in here because there's some white to be left on the nose. There we go. Got Lloyd it. says it's the hair. <laughs> yeah, he's got. We all just realized that Doc Brown has Pennywise hair. <laughs> we all learned something here today. Yep. I'm actually just looking at your picture, Derek, and uh -huh. I just realized that doc the doctor, he always wore that Hawaiian floral that shirt. That Hawaiian floral shirt. <laughs> That's right. He always wore one. He's got his style. Which is so funny. Wow. Loved his Hawaiian florals. See, this is little details that they got right mm -hmm. to make a timeless classic. Yep. Just never forget it. Only thing I don't like about working with ink wash is you got to kind of move real fast. Right. Because once they start drying, then the, they don't match up quite right when you. Right, I'm not really working with that. Go. Lloyd said maybe Doc Brown was Pennywise's long lost dad. Yeah. Well. The story takes a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anything is possible, huh? So explain the um the the painting technique that you're doing there, Derek. This is an ink wash. Mm -hmm. And all I've done is I've taken the black ink that I was using earlier to draw lines, and I've mixed it with water. Uh huh. And like I said, this one, this right here is got this is the light layer, and I'm looking at my uh, model photo, and I'm looking for spots with pure white, like on this edge of his face, down here, and on his neck. And so I take my light wash and basically all I, I color everything except where there's pure white spots. So it's kind of hard to see with the contrast here, but I've got the pure white spot there, the one over here, the one on his neck, a little bit on his cheek. And then what I'll do next is I'll come back with the dark wash, which is in this bottle. And I'll look for the darker spots on, that, on my reference. And I'll add just kind of a nice little... You know, it's, it's like you see me do on previous episodes when I do two tone coloring. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Hi, hi. Same thing, except in black and white. So, like, it's it's always almost always nice and dark around people's eyes because the eye socket recedes back there. So, I'll add a darker wash here and a wash to follow the lines of his face. And this is really going to be what brings this drawing alive. It's these dark wash highlights. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference. Yep. You can go under the nose, you get a little shadow under everybody's nose. Under everyone's lip. So under the eyes. Really starts to come alive. A dark shady spot that runs up to his hairline. And it kind of carries out into this wrinkle. It's starting to come alive. Well, 
What are the commissions do you have lined up, Jared? Oof. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Was that the question of the century? Uh, the, it's not as many as I had at the highest point, but I, right. so I definitely want more out there, people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've, I'm trying to think of what's next. Uh, oh, dead rap, just for you, Lloyd. Um, <laughs> let me look. I got the sheet up right here. Next up, I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> Peeler in the chat's gonna like this. He's next. Uh, Norman Peeler's got a Cyrano Jones with Tribble book page sketch and a Herman Munster book page sketch coming nice. up. Nice. Cool. So that'll probably be tomorrow and Thursday, maybe into Friday, depending if I take a day off or not. <laughs> yeah. Doing like an extra layer, just extra dark highlights in certain spaces right now. Just kind of doing another layer. Yes, Lloyd, you are correct. He is doing um, Green Lantern from the Pick the Hat. Al Jordan. That is what he's drawing. Everybody loves the hat sketches. Yeah. And ironically, GL H H D is not even in the chat today. Man. Nah, it's not even right, man. His call. <laughs> it's his call. I gotta add some gray in the hair. So, are these pieces you're doing solely gonna be a black and white theme? They will be black and white, and when they go to the client, yes. But I'm going to have them professionally colored and mm. offer them as prints uh, colored. In fact, I had to kind of beg my client because I was so happy with how Marty came out. I was like, you know, I want to make prints out of these. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, I want to get professionally colored. I said, would you mind taking them in black and white if I give you, um, you know, free. Uh, high quality prints when those are done of each one as well. So no problem. Which is cool. I think that's a great idea because I think there's nothing cooler than having the original and then having yep. the finished colored print like hanging them up next to each other. I think that's cool. Yep. I got a couple of pieces like that where I got like the original cover of a comic hung up with the final product. Yeah, I got my own little collection going. Oh, yeah? You got a yard sale artist piece in there, or what's the story on that? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> One day I'll be able to pick something. All right. A little personality to the hair. Great Scott. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the shirt. Yeah, I'm going to start with light wash. So Mark's just going to show you my newest piece. All right. I expect greatness. <laughs> well, the pressure's on now. <laughs> I only started it like about five years ago. I finally finished it for Mother's Day. Oh, look at that. That's pretty dope. 
Very, very nice. Who would I look like? Straight up Supergirl. Which is how I always imagined you in my head anyway. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I scored some points. Oh, she can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me ink from the spilled ink on my... <laughs> hey, yeah. make good use of it, man. I try to. Most of it's dried up now. Let's see. After this, I'm going to have to get into his... Eyebrows. Rick, Rick is saying that um, it, you have an interesting idea. Uh, if you don't put the hands on the shared clock, you could put a clock motor behind it and make it like an actual clock. Nice. That is an awesome idea. Oh, uh, yeah. I see what he's saying. Too bad I... Well, I was going to put hands on it. Well, I, I have to because I promised a client. <laughs> yeah. well, next time. I mean, well, now that they're scanned in, they could always be digitally removed. Like the prints, like you could do it with a print. You could just digitally remove the hands. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. If anybody decides they need that idea done in their life, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool idea. Because I'll just, when I get the digitals made, I'll tell my digital gal, hey, do some with no hands. Or just leave the hands. Rick says he needs that idea done. <laughs> Mark, uh, Rick, I'm happy to uh, ex you know get you some prints, you know, and then you can make that happen. That uh, that would look dope, though, Rick. You're you're. I love how you're always taking that one step, that next step mind you've got. Pretty good. Pretty good. He has a friend that made him a 24-hour clock using a deck of cards. Now, that's a dope idea. Not bad at all. Nice. Yeah, that's a very creative idea, Rick. I yeah. must say. Rick's, Rick's the man. Get some love with these eyebrows now. He says he has no actual talents, just can sometimes think outside the box. That is a talent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's a talent right there. Mm -mm. That's hilarious, Rick. Oops, I completely forgot about his ear over there. It is mostly in shadow. So let's put a light layer down. Okay, we'll give that a second to dry. We'll bring the dark layer back. Oh, I can't wait to see these pieces done. <laughs> no we're pressure. Getting, no pressure. We're getting very, very close. I spend more, t like, one well, more time, probably the same amount of time doing the clock numbers. <laughs> I did doing, got my circles, you know, relatively easy to get the circles done. But then I was like, all right, I want these numbers to look halfway decent. So I went and printed out numbers, you know, both Roman numerals, right. regular numbers, a different style of numbers. I printed them all out in different sizes, and I just light boxed them because I'm like, I want them to look nice. So I'm basically sitting here tracing these annoying little numbers. Oh yeah, for hours. <laughs> I was like, 
But it was worth it. I really like the design. I really like how it came out. Oh, you got to go that extra mile, huh? That's right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that those are light box numbers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not about to sit there and try to freehand all those numbers. Hey, believe you me, it's a nuisance. <laughs> Little letters and words. Oh, boy. Rick, Rick says he has a an old Johnny Cash album cover uh, made into a clock. Nice. Live from Fusion Prison, LOL. Prison. I've been there. I've been to Folsom. I went there on a business trip before you make any smart comments. <laughs> I was never convicted of anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I went there on a business trip a couple of years ago. Right, went right to Folsom. I thought, oh, that's cool. That's all anybody thinks about when they hear Folsom. They're like, oh, the Johnny Cash album. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, sorry, that was Lloyd, not Rick. Why was Lloyd pretending to be Rick? <laughs> <laughs> that was my mistake. I'm so sorry. So many levels to what's happening here. Oof. All right, just about got this where I want it. Marty and Doc. Doc and Marty. Marty and Doc. Doc and Marty. It's fun. Almost there. Almost there. I have to wipe this off. Hey, well, you saw most of the ink. Rick sent you a picture of the card deck clock. Oh, oh look forward to seeing it. That's uh, one of the pan to use. You know, the Marty McFly one that you did, I like how the clocks have, like, the numbers are different. Like, the smaller clock has, like, dark mm -hmm. font. Mm -hmm. and the medium size has, like, not so dark. And then the bigger one has that Roman numeral. Yeah, I, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted like, to, here's my little sheets that I printed out of different sizes and different styles of numbers. Yeah, I think it looks cool because it's, like, it's, like, you can clearly see it's three different clocks from like three different characters. Like, good, good. That's what I was I, going for. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. Glad somebody gets me. All right. <laughs> good stuff, Jared. Uh, I have a question from Courtney. Has anyone ever done a DNA test uh, kit? I wow. think she's referring to the 23andMe or the ancestral kits that you mm -hmm. get. Yeah, right. yeah. I have not either. My dad's done a lot of research on our family, so I actually know a lot about it. Nice. I actually just started recently finding out like names of my grandparents from my mom's side. Mm hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I found out that um, my best friends and like growing up when i used to go live uh visit my grandmother are actually my cousins ah i never knew that oh that's cool well you're learning some neat stuff and i used to always wonder why they treated me like i was like part of their family <laughs> well it's because they you were. Knew I, knew. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea Scott, <laughs> he's looking right at you. <laughs> wow, that's he is. That's that looks awesome. like him too. Thank you. I like how his mouth is kind of partially open, just like in the uh, in the <laughs> like model pick I use. Uh, because I, I could almost hear him saying, 
Well, you get this up to 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. <laughs> <laughs> Always crack me up. Yeah, he was funny. Huh? I'm going to put this down. Uh, I'll let Marty take his place. And I'm going to put this down by the fan. It'll dry it a bit before I start adding circles. We're at the hour and 20 minute mark. So I'll probably get my circles added. And then that'll probably be. Uh, I'll probably be that. But no, uh, going back to your question, Courtney, um, I, uh, I've never done the, a DNA test, court directed or otherwise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of doing one, though? Well, not really. I don't. Yeah, I can't say that I have. Not I mean, I, I see the appeal for it, for people to learn and stuff, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I just don't have that bug in me. I'm, I've always been a more, a more forward than back kind of guy. Yeah, like I'm yeah. like it doesn't change anything. No, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. it's funny because I I live now. I've I've gone out and joined the Air Force, traveled the world, here and there and everywhere. Now I'm back home in the same town that I went to high school in. And I'll run into people that I went to high school with, and they they're just like, "Hey," and I don't. <laughs> again, I'm more forward than back. I don't remember. Yeah. I always have to look to my wife and go, "Who is that?" And they'll be like, "Do you remember the time that you did this, that, and the other?" And I'm like, "No, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember." So I'm just a bad memory person, basically. I guess. Lloyd says his family history book looks like the yellow pages. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, I know my uh my my dad's father my grandfather on my dad's side he came from spain um and that's the side i know the most about because that's the side my dad's done the most amount of research on but yeah there's actually a lot of um all bricks in spain except they you know they say it fancy they pronounce it albatic uh. and here you'll like this part mark i um i was looking online and there's a guy named mark albatic MARC, oh, and he's a comic book creator in Spain, so we're definitely related. Yeah, and he's inked a lot of the Scooby Doo comics. Oh, and I ordered one of his inked pages off of uh, eBay. No. I have it hanging up here in my studio because I was like, "There's another Albrick out there from my family tree who also makes comics." <laughs> yeah, go figure. That's <laughs> pretty odd. Cool. Nice. <laughs> huh? Small world. I tell you what, he's on. Yeah. It's funny though because um, Mark's last name Hatherley. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't looked into where the name comes from, but I have a feeling that that name comes from England. It sounds very English to me. Yeah, they yes. have a Hatherley Manor in England somewhere, and I always joke with Mark that one day we need to go on a family trip and stay at the Hatherley Manor because Heck yeah. The way they spell Hatherley is the exact same way that Mark spells his last name. Yeah, you should just show up and just like act act like you you deserve a, like hey, I'm Mark yeah. Hatherley. I own the place. I own the place. <laughs> <laughs> that would be super cool to go there. Heck yes, I think you totally should. And the the history of that manor, it's like a hotel. It's like really old. That's really cool. Yeah, I would definitely encourage you to you know, when, when, if we ever start traveling again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Lloyd says that um, they traced his mom's side going back 500 years. Wow. And on his dad's side, over 300 years. I'm like, wow. That's pretty serious. Uh, yeah. That's, that's some serious family history. That's... I mean, if you can do something like that, that is amazing. Heck yeah. All right. Now. Courtney was mentioning that it's kind of hard looking up your family history when you don't really have help doing it. Yeah, it can be challenging. It's yeah. Sure. She says that um, it looks like it's the tests is saying that she's 
mixed in a lot of different ethnic groups. Yep. Yep. No, well, we've got some, a lot of Spanish, like I said, and then some um, Native American and um, maybe Irish. I don't know. I might have made up that last part. Some, some very, <laughs> very white people because I burn easy. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I burn real easy, like. <laughs> Lloyd says that that's why the his family history book is yellow. <laughs> I would say so. Oh, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> always count on Lloyd. Jokes of the jokes. Well, right now I'm looking for a very specific kind of black Sharpie. I have some called Sharpie Extremes that are fade resistant. All, everything else has been done in, in you know archival ink, so I don't want things to fade over the years. So I try to use the Sharpie Extremes. Got one around here somewhere. So what's the difference? Are they like blacker? Is the pigments darker? You know, it's funny because when they go down, like if I if I did regular Sharpie and then put Sharpie Extreme right next to it, Sharpie Extreme actually looks a little less deep black. But it's uh, fade resistant, so it, it uh, right. it's, it's made it's specifically to not fade. Right. Like there's an extreme. Finally found one. Um, we used to have a whole bunch I guess of that's them. where the extreme part comes that's in. That's where the extreme part comes in. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so time to put in the big clock face. It's funny because if this is a regular Sharpie, I only have to go over it once. But because it's an extreme, I have to go over it twice to get the deeper black. But I'll be worth it. Yeah. Lloyd said that it took him 10 years to complete his going back on his family history. That's some dedication. Yeah, that is. That's some back to the future type of thing there. <laughs> Thanks, straight. You need a time machine. Okay, so those will go like that. Oh, that looks cool. There you go. And I'll finish out that little number. And this one, because that's a 12, so it needs another Roman numeral. And that's a mm -hmm. 6, so it needs another one. Continue those over. Now, I'm going to let you decide, Duchess, should I attempt to make the same pattern over here, or should I go out of my way to make the pattern a little different, to, to give it a variety? Should it have, I think it should be a little bit different. Make Give it a little variety. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel, I'm feeling the variety. Like, it should be something different on the dark side. Like, I still want to use three clocks, but just in a different arrangement, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I'll put the smaller Small one up one. here. I was just thinking that. <laughs> and the bigger one, at, I don't know. At the bottom. You do the smaller one peeking out from behind that bigger one. Kind of like the way that one is. Let me see here. There's a small plate. Got to put the this one like here. And then that one could be peeking out as much space as I can. That could work. What's on the bottom right corner of that sheet? Which one? The dock. Uh, nothing. My nothing? signature. My signature will be on it like this one. Okay, so it's like mid-shoulder. Yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> kind of fades out. I think I will bring this one down real low. And put the smaller one on top, yeah. And put the smaller one up in the right corner. Low, can I get it? Right about there. Decision made. There you go. Just need to make sure I want to, which one I want poking out foreground most. 
This one, the little one's in the foreground. So, okay, that's fine. It looks like everyone agrees. Different to reverse the look, Jared. Mm -hmm. Courtney says, live on the wild side. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I do it, Courtney. No, it says reverse the clocks. Are you going to reverse the numbers as well, like the side of the numbers? Yeah, you'll see the other side of the clock. Oh, like here you'll see 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. I just want to see where to put this one best. Balance the piece. Do I want it out here? Maybe. Okay. See how far out that clock goes on the other piece. There we go. All right, everybody pray for me. <laughs> Good luck. All right, this clock layout is done. Looks like that. Marvie's actually, I'm gonna, I'll go full screen for a minute so everybody can see them side by side. Yeah, that's cool. So they oh, go. So we Like that. So the, they have enough, I like it because it's just enough to make it feel balanced. Yep. But it's not the same. the big ones tucked in and the little ones poking out flip of that i think that's gonna be i think that's gonna be a popular piece i hope so yeah i believe about that's gonna be a one of a kind piece. i mean judging by the popularity of the movie it should mm -hmm. it should be let's put it that way i hope so i really like it i just i, I like it as well that came my, on i night. know my i know my client does he's a great repeat buyer right out of florida well, if you're watching, there's a sneak peek of your piece, and it's awesome. That's right. I'm glad you guys are here to support it. Yeah. And that gets us to about an hour. Let me get off uh, uh, full screen here. And then let's go full screen on Mark. Look at that. Who needs a 9x12 Green Lantern? Because uh, it would be for sale. Somebody should snag that up. <laughs> What's he saying? I can't. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> 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 Lloyd. Reverse the clock. Show us their backsides. <laughs> <laughs> Silliness. All right. I got pretty far on that piece. So now all I really have left to do is the numbers. And a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of line tweaking and touch up, but I'm pretty happy with my one two combo of Marty yeah. and Doc. It's always nice when it comes out how you want it, huh? Yes, indeed. And hopefully, yeah. we'll be able to get some packages out. Yes, uh, the post offices are supposedly opening back up in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. So if you've ordered stuff from Mark, it should be. Uh, coming soon hopefully everything goes well and yeah you can always order some more things i know i've i mentioned you to a group of friends that were thinking of commissions so oh, right if you hear of anybody recently coming along this could be my boys yeah no problem because they were talking about they'd seen you on the stream they're like man he's really good and i'm like well order something Get him <laughs> yeah. now before he's super expensive <laughs> yeah inflation <laughs> And just so that everyone knows, um, we did look into the shipping rates uh, for Canada and the U.S., and it's both the same. So it is $20 shipping for both Canada and U.S. There you go. From Bermuda. From Bermuda. So mm -hmm. something like this this Green Lantern here, with shipping included, would be what? 50 bucks? Is that right? I don't want to speak for you. 60 
Because sixty still, bucks. Because for inks, it's forty. Oh, it's inked. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm glad you glad you corrected me. I'm out here yeah, selling your stuff. Fine. Yeah. So be so. Yeah. Plus the twenty for shipping. There you go. And if I know Mark the way I know him, he's not going to be able to help but put some background elements in. Oh, yeah, you do this. Because that's what he does. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah, so cool. If you need Mark to do you anything, just hit him up. 100%. You see his Instagram at? Yeah, you can just message him. Um, he's, I think you're what? H-T-H-R-L-Y-7-5 on Twitter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's H-T-H-L-R-Y-7-5 on Twitter. You see his Instagram. You have any trouble finding him on any of the medias, just hit me up. Yeah. And I will get the word along to him. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Rick said, thinking about it, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, thank you. You can't Lord. go wrong. You can't go wrong with a Mark Hathaway original. I've got one right here off camera, actually. Because I, let's see, where did I, it should be right here. My, I have my little things to noodle on stack. And I'm pretty sure I stuck your beach head. Where, let's see. All right, I'm grabbing the whole stack, so it's not coming. All right, there's a page from Francisco Stein that I'll be inking soon. There's the blue line. I'll ink it. There's, oh, James Bond's for sale if anybody needs him. <laughs> uh, blue line from... All these blue lines I got to do from Cold Lightning. Where the heck is the beach head? There's some one I put in there. Somebody took my beach head. I suspect. Oh, I remember great. that chair too. Don't I hadn't even heard of that guy before. <laughs> oh, you did a great job. Where the heck is he? I put him over here because I was like, I might ink him on the show one day. Huh. Must have escaped. I'll find him. What up, Hyperion's Atomic Vision? I ordered two recently. He knocked them out of the park. I'm assuming he's talking about. Oh, Mark. yes. Thanks. Yeah. What'd you do for him? Can it you was, say? Uh, it was a uh, Hyperion and a. Doc Samson. Oh, I saw that Doc Samson. Yeah. That I, was killer. I actually redone the Doc Samson. I didn't like the way the inks came out on the first one. It's amazing how sometimes it could just change like right before your eyes. Oh, but, man. But it, it, the pencils were awesome. But the second one came out good as well. Um, Lloyd said, did Lloyd order a Harley Quinn from you? Yes. Yeah, yep. she began off soon as well. Awesome, awesome. Genome jumps in. What up, Genome? We're about to wind down. Uh, I've just finished the second part of the Marty McFly to Doc Brown. Obviously, I still have to do the clockwork. But uh, I finished that, and Mark's finished up his Green yep. Lantern. It mm -hmm. is for sale. And look, I told you he couldn't help but do background. He's working on it now. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yes. We need to work out a deal too. We gotta start. We've always talked about this. All right, so you get it for Mark for sixty. All right, but if you decide to go, let's say uh, eighty-five, Mark will mail it to me. I'll hand color it with Prisma, <laughs> and then I'll mail yeah. it to you. <laughs> the ultimate combo pack for eighty-five dollars. You get a Mark original, and I'll do my magical color work on yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm actually, I, I actually, I actually am looking forward to seeing that i mean because even something like this will be nice to see you call it on yep. on stream you know i agree yeah i definitely would i need to color something one of your pieces I mean, if no one buys it i'll send it over because i mean half my pictures just sit there anyway and just in my food i just forgot about them you know <laughs> i tell you what we need to do the we need to do the three minute sketch postcard a uh, fundraiser episode yeah, and we need to do a Mark Hatherley's portfolio episode where you can just show us what you've got laying around. Yeah, I'll let people you know can make that. offers and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I get everything all in all. Yeah, there's a bunch of things that I have. Some some stuff I I just forget about. You know, you oh, we <laughs> we've tantalized uh, Rick. He said, <laughs> "Kitty Kitty Pride and Colossus with the combo color work." Oh. We can make that happen for you, my friend. <laughs> just say the word. Just say the word. I've actually done a Colossus for Marvel in the trading card set that I did. Oh, nice. I, you know what I did? I absolutely lived out one of my dreams as a kid. Because I like I got my list of cards to do from Marvel and, and Upper Deck. 
and Colossus was on it. And, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, I know what I'm doing. When I was a kid, I always wanted to see Arnold Schwarzenegger play Colossus. Nice. So I found this. This I used a reference of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was like, like in his prime, like like right yeah, when he's yeah. like like Conan. And he was just like, it was just an off camera pose, and he was like flexing, and he was like in a good mood, and he was smiling. <laughs> And I was like, I'm turning that into glasses. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. So somebody out there opened up a package of Marvel Premiere 2017 cards and got that that card that I've been thinking of my whole life. Hmm. Back in the 80s when we were all casting Marvel movies in our head, I was just like, Arnold Schwarzenegger has to play Colossus. Period. Uh, funny how, we, how big the comic book movies came on. Huh? Yeah. I never dreamed they'd be this Exactly. Far Sounds like Jeff's getting serious because he said he will send us a message about the Kitty Pride Colossus combo. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. No problem. That would be awesome. Thanks, dude. I must say, I've been busy, I must say. So I'll send everyone's tracking numbers as soon as they go up. That's right. Oh, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't advertise for myself. Let's see if I got it laying around. Uh, Oh, I think it's in the other room. As that's like the story every time, isn't it? And I look for something, other room. That's yeah. <laughs> Next time I start looking for something, you guys just save me time and you're like, it's in the other room. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got the I got the um, the ray from Ghostbusters back from the print shop. So I wanted to show oh, you. Nice. All right. Hang loose. I'll be right back. That should be awesome. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, so if anyone wants anything done, um, just hit up Jared and Mark, and they'll hook you up. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that is good. What? Is that your friend uh, in India that done that? That is my friend Mohan in India. That is nice. I'm going to go full screen for just a second so we can see it in its entirety. Um, I offered it up on um, Twitter. Uh, or on social media in general. I offered it originally was is 15 bucks for the print. I offered a deal where you could get the print and the original for 60 bucks, and that sold like that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that one's gone. So I do have prints left. Um, just if you're in our chat and you're watching our show tonight, I will make an offer just to people in the show. Up to you if you want it. No pressure, but. Ugh. As you may or may not know, I already have Pete and Winston done. And now we add Ray to it. I do. So, almost got the Hill collection. That's right. So um, 15 bucks is, is the print price, but obviously I'm not going to charge 45 for three. I'll do um, that all, looks nice. all three for 25. That is nice. And here's the, here's the secret behind the secret, people in the chat. You can get all three for 25 That includes shipping to your house if you're U.S., uh, if you're Canada, like Lloyd, uh, we'll do 25 plus whatever actual cost of shipping is. Um, here's the bonus. So it's 25 to get all three. Uh, if you go $30, this is just for this special moment. <laughs> if you go 30 bucks, I will. When I finish Egon, because he's coming. I will put you, you'll basically have pre-ordered uh, Egon and I will send you an Egon when nice. they're done. And I guarantee Egon will be done before the end of this year. Probably before the end of the next couple of months, but I don't like to make promises in case weird stuff happens. Yep. But I will Something do a... For Rick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, there's one for Rick. You'll get all four Ghostbusters for $30. So something to think about. If you're interested in that, hit me up. You see my Twitter handle. Uh, that's also my Facebook handle. That's also my Instagram. It's all our at yard sale artists. Hyperion's in. All right. <laughs> I love it. You'll get all I four. Like this is an auction. There should be a third person. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll probably do, since I have this much interest in it already, is I'll probably go ahead and bump Egon up in the rotation. Because that way I can do thirty dollars. You guys don't have to wait on two shipments. I can just as soon as Egon gets in, I'll package them all up and send them to you. 
Um, so you're already you're inspiring me. I'll put Egon, bump him <laughs> way up on the things to do list. So if you if you do go in on on the thirty dollar deal, you don't have to wait nearly as long. So if you're interested in all three for twenty five, uh, hit me up. You've got the you see the at yard sellers. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, you can email me if you don't do any social media. You can e- email me. And that is uh, simply Jared, J A R R O D, at the yard sale artist.com. And you can email me that way too. So hit me up with your interest. I see there's already enough interest to go ahead and knock out Egon. Yeah. Because I don't want y'all to have to wait. Rick already sent you an email. <laughs> I love it. Rick's in. Uh, Hyperion's Atomic Vision's in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, guys. You've really inspired me. Oh, Gino. Gino cracked me up because he says, let's see the Michael Myers print. Not only is it not it's not here and it's not in the other room, it's all the way out in my building because it's in my other binder of black and white prints, which I don't have. It's out in the building. But Next time. Next time, Gino. I'm making you a promise. <laughs> we'll see the Mike Myers black and white print on the next episode with me and Mark. Um, if even if I forget, I will get up and go all the way out to the building. And gr- you know what? I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> Good stuff. Hip yourself. I'll be back and go ahead and time me. I bet it's less than four minutes. I'm out. <laughs>suggestions for the background oh you guys can't see it but mark is doing the green lantern that was pulled from the hat planets in the background too better be something to space theme you gotta put a ufo in the background <laughs> genome says the drawing of the headphones <laughs> that <Yeah>. background <laughs> <laughs> yeah Good idea. That's an awesome picture, yeah? VM Peeler, full screen of the headphones. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Jero went so fast. <laughs> he forgot. What's the time? <laughs> Two minutes. That was actually less than four minutes. What's the time? All right, Gino. And this is for you, bud. The commitment. <sighs> <sighs> hey, it's Conan. <laughs> You're not looking for Conan. All right. It's near the back because I keep all the horror pieces in the back. Uh-oh. All right. Oh, that's that's cool. not it. There we go. Okay. Horror Ooh. pieces. That so Frankie this, looks nice. Thank you. I have a whole set of uh, Universal Monster movie, uh, movie characters that are only in black and white because that's the way they're supposed to be, man. Yeah. And let me tell you something. The the 16,000 little squares on the Invisible Man's robe, yeah, that took for flipping ever. <laughs> <laughs> All these little hairs on the Wolfman took forever. That is insane. Oh, wow, yep. That looks like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I love Frankenstein's wife. It looks like a lot of work. One of my the, artistically is one of my favorite things I've ever done. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. it doesn't sell that way, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, that's, Michael that's Myers. The, yeah. There that's he is. Deep. That looks cool. There he there is. You go, Michael Myers. I uh, finally got to see. <sighs> so there you <laughs> have it, you know. <laughs> all right, here's a messed up thing, right? This is my black and white book. But my print shop charges me when I have Elvira's made. They charge me for color prints because her lips are red and her eyes are blue. 
Oh, serious? Are you serious? So, so they charged me for a color print, and I'm like, you know what? I should just give it black and white and just do that by hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Save myself the money. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got to make a buck, huh? So what else is in there? Oh, we're going to play that game. All right, here we go. I feel like the more you turn pages, the, the something creepy is just going to just now, jump up. Like, see, a lot of this stuff, like there's Peter and his black and white. Mm-hmm. A lot of this stuff is just what you've seen before, just the black and white version. But that's right. only that's only in black and white. I'm thinking about giving this over to Ken Solo and letting him play with it to see if he wants to do something fun with the colors. Oh, right. Lloyd right. says sold. Uh, I don't know which one is sold, but I'm Tell assuming me- Michael Myers. Lloyd, if you could just confirm that. I'm gonna start writing this stuff down. <laughs> So we know that uh, Hyperion and Rick wanted the uh, Ghostbuster sets, right? Rick says he posted a print screen of your empty desk. <laughs> 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 All right. So just for um, now. No, it says Myers. Lloyd wants some Myers. Now I'm, you know, I'm gonna encourage you, Lloyd, as we go through this. If you see anything you else, anything else you like, just get it, because they're only five bucks additional. And since I got a mail to Canada, you know, just to send one to you, it's gonna, I don't know, it might be around. I'm guessing here, but maybe around twenty-five bucks. So I'd rather you get a bulk buy. You know, just I hate that you lose so much in shipping. Yeah. So if you see anything, shout out. You know, and, I, and I'll I'll bundle deal you because I don't. I hate that you just get one for that shipping price. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. The shipping's a nuisance. Yeah, so to Canada it is. Uh, but so that's the Myers piece. Um, Courtney's asking, "What's the price for the black and white pieces?" Who's asking? Courtney. Oh, what's they're the, the same. The same as the color piece. So basically, when you buy them here on the show, when we talk about them on the show, you get them for fifteen dollars a pop, and then five each for additional. When you go to my website, you know, they're basically $15 a pop. But if you're watching the show and you're part of the audience and you just $5 additional for each one after your first. Week. All right, Lloyd, I'll keep flipping pages. All right. So we got Elvira. We got Catwoman, which another artistically one of my favorite pieces I've ever done, but it doesn't sell very well. <laughs> yeah. I got the a lot of detail. It's insane. This, he wants to sell. I, it's weird. Some things yeah. that I'm like, I'm really happy with this piece. And then nobody wants it. Yeah. Um, scream. Uh, surprisingly easy to draw <laughs> <I think. laughs> all right so we saw the monster movies got the mummy the bride nosferatu and the wolfman creature from black, black lagoon the invisible man uh frankie uh, or if you want to be one of those guys actually that's the monster the doctor's name was frankenstein <laughs> And then, of course, there's Bella Lugosi. That's right, um, Dr. Frankenstein. Rick, so have a good one, sir. All right, Rick. Later, Rick. Thank you. Uh, again, these are available in color. The Guy Gardner and the... Uh, oh, look, I have a Guy Gardner in color sitting right here. There you go, side by side. Look at the work that Mohan does. She takes this wow. and turns it into that. God bless Mohan. Hmm. So... There's a guy, Gardner, a Batman Superman team up piece. Arrow, also available in color. Uh, Ooh, Hellboy. Hellboy, also available in color. Cool. Um, a little, just a little Matt Murdock, you know, kind of bef- Daredevil before he became Daredevil, just wearing the black outfit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Indiana uh, Jones. That's a cool one, too, the Indiana one. I, yeah. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman. Uh, that's only in black and white. It's because I just like the way it looked in black and white. Yeah, yeah. that was the cool. Uh, Han Solo. He's color also. Han Solo is available in color, but Batman, yeah, he's just black. Spidey also available in color. Uh, Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow also available in that's color. That's hot. Lenny Swood also available in color. One of my best sellers, actually. Color mm-hmm. piece. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thor, I, I keep a black and white book because I have just a handful of customers and clients who just yeah. love the black and white. Like, they don't yeah. care what I do. Right. They just like, like whatever your next piece is, make sure I get one. Okay. I think black and white's cool too. 
Hulk. so much contrast, you know. And of course, the Incredible Hulk. I don't know what used to be here, but it sold out. Whatever it was. <laughs> That's a good thing. Link also available in color. Snake Eyes versus Storm Shadow. This is available in black and white only. Sean Connery available in color. Star Trek available in color. Punisher available in color. Wolverine available in color. Wonder Woman available in color. That's a classic Wonder Woman too. You know it. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a nice one. Amazing. Thank you. Prince available in color. Lloyd said Wolverine. <laughs> All right, I'm adding that. Now, one. Lloyd, do you want black and white and color? He might need to see that color one. I'm just saying. He might need to see that color one. Let me just show him. So he got it right here. And you can get both and put them side by side. All right, where are you at, Wolverine? I know you're in here somewhere. Oh, I forgot I rearranged him with the Ghostbusters. There he is. There's Wolverine in color. So in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a shed, it's a building. All right. I got Star Wars, also available in color. Laura Croft. Gotcha. Making a note. Is that, that Star Wars one is cool, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. It's very minimalist. Yeah, Try to get right. it down to the bare basics. The contrast is nice. But you mm -hmm. can know, still know what's going on. Tomb Raider. The Winston black and white. One of the few pieces I still have the original from because Ernie Hudson signed it for me. Uh, black and white. Blade, Freddie Mercury, Supergirl, Mad Max, only available in black and white. Oh my god, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger, black Stop and white. Stop it. Oh. I should oh. get that my brother one day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Duchess. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Flash, James Bond, Daniel mm. Craig style, which I also noticed when I drew it. You've never seen Daniel Craig and Ellen DeGeneres at the same time, have you? Doesn't he look <laughs> a little bit like Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> just saying. That's the right. bizarre wrecking, just they kind of look the same to me. Anyway, and of course, Conan. Nice. Always see a Freddy. Well, let me show you the color, Freddy. Just in case oh, you, you have a decision to make. That could be there, Lloyd. How like, oh, dare you? There's color, Freddy. Ooh. Color, black and white, up to you, buddy. Yeah, he looks scarier in color. <laughs> that is some cool. I like art. how he put the face in the moon. That's a little Ken Solo add on. Love it. Lloyd, do you want color and black and white for Freddy? We've Damn been through my color book. I'm just flipping now to buy time while we wait for <laughs> Lloyd's decision. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, the colors. I mean, these things are nice. Oh, this is this a lot of Mohan work here. Although this is a Ken Solo. And that's a Mohan. I mean, they're both so good. Yeah. They're both so good. That was a great job, you know? Uh, I really like this uh, Sergeant Rock piece. You have a tall order from Hyperion. Black and white <laughs> for Meyer uh, Wolfman. And the Myers, Frank Wolfman, Mummy, Frank, Mummy, Preacher. Somebody's a man after my own heart. Loves all the same <laughs> ones I do. <laughs> What's after Creature? Again, Storm Shadow. Got it. And what I'll what I'll try to do there. Uh, all black and white. Sorry. All right. Good news for you, Hyperion. Since you wanted the Ghostbusters thing if you're if you're willing to wait and do that all in one bundle i mean i can do each and every one of those for five dollars since you're already getting a package they're just five bucks each you don't even have to pay 15 for the first one because you're already getting a package from it because you'll get the four ghostbusters um 
when you guys completed and then I'll put each, one of each of those just put in there and they'll just be five dollars a hit sounds good excellent did we hear from uh, Lloyd on he Lloyd said both for his Freddy's okay oh Superman oh man oh my twist in my arm now that's <laughs> amazing <laughs> All right, Lloyd's got Freddy color. Both black and white in color. And black and white. So for Lloyd, I've got uh, a Mike Myers, a Wolverine, both color and black and white, a Freddy in black, color and black and white. So five pieces. So uh, 15, 20, 25. So 35 bucks. Uh, you're, a, you're, a, you're a loyal customer, Lloyd. I'll give you 30 bucks plus whatever shipping is. Yeah, that's good support, you know. Yeah, he's a good support guy. So I'm gonna give him basically one for free. Jared, but, keep flipping someone <laughs> something else. I gotta keep. Flipping. I can't get off the live stream. Oh, that Punisher looks cool. I, I love this it. Punisher. Oh man, I sent that, that to Mohan. Punisher is. I sent, I sent the black and white to Mohan, and I said I gave her two pieces of direction. I said brick wall, and a sign behind him that says Dead End Alley, and she just she put this greenish yellow gas coming up and i was like kill her yeah, that's nice kill her awesome she's so good yeah look at that wonder woman that is yeah Ken Solo, he colored that piece added the ring of stars can always add something cool always oh that flash looks amazing look at that. Is in it. it's... yep that's ken solo doing the, his thing again with the <laughs> breaking the flash that's so cool Awesome. Thank you, Hyperion. I got you. I got you down. More uh, more impetus for me to get that Egon done so I can get your order wrapped up. Hyperion, are we linked up on, on Twitter? Let me know. We're linked on Twitter or, uh, or on Facebook. Once Wonder Woman in color. Who does? Lloyd. Oh, added it? All right. <laughs> Hyperion says yes. You're linked with him on Twitter. Okay. What's uh? What's this? What's your Twitter handle? Be Hyperion over there too. I just want to be able to reach out to him when his order's ready. Yep. Okay. So there's Thor and Hulk. And the Ghostbusters. Sample. Uh, just gotta find the ideal pose that I want for Egon. I've got a couple of them that I like. One I really liked, but he was vertical, and uh, all the other three are horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about just doing it, but then a, a couple of people right, right. on the live stream were like, "Ah, that'd be a deal breaker for me." So I got. I want to find a good horizontal. Oh, thanks, Hyperion, for the message. You're the man. So there's the new ring. Someday I'm. I got a whole other book, by the way, of eleven by fourteen watercolor pieces. I'm gonna have to bring on the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hellboy and Blade. Hellboy's got a mean face. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, that looks cool. It was my. Different, very different style, right there. Is, that is, those are cool, though. Nice. <laughs> Me and John Beatty teamed up for a couple Mario mashups. Those look so this awesome. Must sell a the, the this must sell at the Comic This must sell. You would think, but they, they sell kind of like slow and steady. Right, right. Because we were going to do more. Like John and I were like, these are going to sell like hotcakes. And yeah, I would think the children would eat them up. See, they like just kind of slow and steady. So John was like, eh, I'm not really interested in doing more. Because and I was like, I don't, I understand. They don't sell fast. Right, they sell right. slow and steady. Exactly. Exactly. Spidey, Walking Dead, Sherlock Modern, Sherlock Classic, Star Warsy stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. We're Everything almost there. Crazy. We gotta get Mark to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Supergirl and He Man. And He Man looks awesome. Thought. James Bonds are my favorites. Connery, Roger, Pierce. As you already know, I did the Dalton main piece. Now I got to do his accoutrements. 
to make the montage. Of course, there's Sparrow, Pinhead, <laughs> Jason, Jason, your favorite, oh. Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy looks pretty creepy. Jessica, Star Trek, Batman, Superman, Ten Ten. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ten Ten. And then the that Justice like League. would be a hot sell as well. You would think. <laughs> but see, that's, it's amazing, though, isn't it? I mean, I know people like to look at them, but they just don't want to buy them, huh? I guess. Got the Justice League as the, Sco the Justice League International as the Scooby Doo Gang. That's a very specific piece. <laughs> Hyperion says add a Jason and Pinhead. Add a dear list. Jason, color, Pinhead. Color, and now that I know we're linked on on Twitter, I'll definitely send you a message to make sure your order's right and all that jazz. Snake Eyes, Harley on a playing card. I still have any of the old ones. Oh, it looks like I do. So I have her on red, and I have a few old ones where she's on felt green, like a card table. Pull it down. Is that the felt green, like it's on a card table? couple options there she's so trouble <laughs> <laughs> then we get into the auburn stuff so if you're an auburn fan uh, like myself you'd be very happy with these if you're not then you're probably not terribly happy with them. <laughs> lloyd wants a jason as well lloyd wants a jason you like that color one because he's in black and white as well might as well get both All right, Jason Color for Lloyd's order. Oh, Burner says W. All right, we're going in, Burner. So uh, there you go. You can get your <laughs> get your Cam Newton. You get your Albi, and you can get your just general Auburn football piece. Burner in the chat. Yeah, we're looking at some of my uh, my portfolio here. So and it's a special tonight, Burner, since you're coming in a little late. Mm -hmm. uh, you drop uh, your first prints 15 bucks. That includes shipping, and then each additional one is only $5. So you can get all three of my Auburn prints for 25 bucks, and that includes shipping, my friend. Tantalizing, I know. <laughs> yes, Genome, Genome does have uh, the pinhead and the uh, Jason. So cool. It's always fun to go through the book, and I appreciate the support with you guys. So we've been through the, the color and the black and white books together tonight. Thank you for those of you who have shown interest and support. It's really awesome. You've really motivated me to get onto that Egon piece. Yeah. There's people excited about the $30 special. Barner says he's in. <laughs> oh, he's in. I gotta write it down on the list. Uh, I've tried I remember his Twitter account now. I know I know your Twitter your Twitter name. He's falling up and he wants the three times Auburn pieces and uh, for just 25 bucks mailed directly to his house. I've made a note and uh, you can either hit me up um, on Twitter for that burner or I've got your information. I can kind of hit you up once I get, I get all these orders wrapped up. I'll reach out to everybody and say, hey, here's your complete order. Here's your total. Uh, for those of you waiting on the Ghostbusters piece, uh, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay anything until that's done. You know, don't pay up front. Just pay when when I get your order together. So that would be Rick and Hyperion, uh, Lloyd, and AU following up. I can get you guys' um, orders uh, prepped and get you your prices. I know how to get in contact with you. Oh, okay. You're not on Twitter anymore, Burner. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you know how to PayPal me, um, Burner. Just 25 bucks gets you all three. And uh, I know who you are. <laughs> He's a good repeat customer. I appreciate it. Let's get off of me and... Uh, did someone nab that that Green Lantern? I know uh, Rick said something, but no, Rick wanted to get like a combo piece from us. Right? Yeah, yeah. He sent a message to us on Twitter. You'll see it added us to a little group so we can discuss that. All right. If anybody needs an original uh, Green Lantern from Mark, straight from Bermuda, was that sixty dollars inked, shipped, everything? Oh, yeah. 
60 bucks and that's the whole kit and caboodle includes your shipping and everything that's an original piece very cool green lantern thank you jared no problem we have definitely gone long on our 90 minute show yeah, tonight yeah. i appreciate y'all putting up with that um we got all caught up in the new uh ghostbusters piece just took us down a rabbit hole <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what it's all about. Lloyd said he's still waiting for the Doom cover to show up. Dang, man! That, well, I guess maybe that's the the um, the virus or something. Because yeah, I sent that. Gosh. Yeah, that's the other part, huh? The, the mail takes for Apple. What the express shipping so expensive? Yeah, I'll keep an eye out, Lloyd, in case it gets returned to me. If there was something wrong with the address, because I know it was a new address for you. Maybe something got mixed up, but I'll let you know if I get a return. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Oh, look at that burner dropping money in my pocket. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. Yes, thank sir. Thank you, um, Mark That's and always, Yep, no problem. Always a pleasure. Thank you, again. thank you everyone, for joining. Yep. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, follow us on our social medias, and thank you so much for your support. You've been listening to Joe November. Uh, good night from Alabama, and I assume from Bermuda as well. Good night from Bermuda, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for the support. Our boat of glory is ready. Our moment